Protests, tear gas, arrests and unrest in downtown Fort Wayne this weekend. It's in response to the death of George Floyd while in Minneapolis police custody one week ago. The last three days unfolded in a way many people never thought they would see in our community. Wayne 15's Michael Kuhn was there for day two of the protests and he joins us now in the newsroom with a breakdown of this weekend's events. Yeah, after three days of tensions between police and protesters, a, a sense of momentary temporary peace has fallen on the city this morning and peace of course was the goal at the start of each day of protest but sustaining that for hours and days on end became the biggest challenge. It started with a few dozen Friday evening and within hours the crowd of protesters downtown grew to hundreds. The sound of chants, honking horns and revving engines soon filled the air Things remained passionate but peaceful with police keeping their distance for a while. But as the protesters began blocking traffic, the atmosphere changed. Soon police responded in riot gear and attempted to disperse the crowd. When that didn't happen, they repeatedly launched tear gas and pepper spray in the direction of protesters. Things quickly escalated from there and continued to deteriorate into the evening hours. By the time morning came, several downtown businesses had been damaged, vandalized or looted and police had arrested 29 people. Saturday afternoon started with a renewed goal of peace. Police made their presence known much more clearly with the Allen County Sheriff's Department creating a barrier around the courthouse and Fort Wayne police blocking off several downtown streets. And for close to four hours, leaders of the protest maintained peace and kept people from blocking traffic. But around five o'clock, the crowd once again spilled into the street with some people kneeling in front of cars on Clinton. That's when an armored police truck pulled up and an officer commanded the crowd to get out of the roadway. Almost immediately, several people in the crowd threw water bottles and other objects at the vehicle and began approaching it. After the protesters refused to move, police began firing tear gas and pepper spray into the crowd on the street and on the sidewalks for the second day in a row. The group split up for a short time before moving north and regrouping at the Martin Luther King Jr. Bridge. Eventually, people returned to downtown where tensions rose once again. More glass was broken and more tear gas was used before the night finally wrapped up after midnight. Police arrested 70 people during day two. On Sunday, there was no organized Facebook event, but people began gathering on the courthouse lawn anyway, and by early afternoon, hundreds were once again lining Clinton with signs. This time around, the protests remained mostly peaceful with leaders in the group keeping everyone in line and off the streets. Fort Wayne police patrolled the area, but instead of responding in riot gear, some took the time to carry on conversations with the protesters. No tear gas, pepper spray, or other projectiles were used throughout the day. Police say they did not disperse the crowd until after 11.15 last night when they received reports of shots fired in the area. Those who refused to leave were arrested, but police officials are still working to tally the total number of arrests. With the start of the work week beginning today, it's still unclear if or when those protests might resume and what that crowd might look like. Live in the newsroom, Michael Kuhn, Wayne 15 News.